Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plots Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. If you don't have space or time for a large garden, go small with five gallon buckets. Today we're gonna to show you how. Also, herbs are great in the kitchen and in the garden. We'll be talking about a few that are easy to grow. That's just ahead on the Family Plots Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to the Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Walter Battle. Walter is the UT County Director in Haywood County, and Ms. Rainey Erskine will be joining us later. Hi, right, Walter. I see we have a bucket on the table. What are we gonna do today? Well, you know, there are a lot of people who simply do not have the space to garden. Okay, sure. And, you know, me, me being a person that like to kind of watch my money a little bit, <laughs> um, I was walking through a, a garden center one day and I saw where you could have these, uh, you know, tomatoes already in a pot. Uh -huh. And they were getting like $17 for those things, wow. you wow. know? So I said, well, wait a minute. If somebody like me who got a bunch of old buckets sitting around the house <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> you just you put them right? <laughs> So basically, uh, you know, what, what, what I did, I, I, I got my bucket. Okay. Now, you want to make sure, I really like to see you get a new bucket, though. Okay. Because, you know, if you're using something that used to, be, you know, have like petroleum products in it or point. some kind of chemical or mm -hmm. something, Very they might point. have some kind of residue do in there that you know may you know work against you okay so but basically what you know you know you know what I did I go and I get get my drill and and I and I drill some holes and okay. uh, these right here are uh, one inch holes but you can use half inch holes just whatever as far as long as water can drain out of okay it. so that's why you put the holes in the bottom right? yes okay. yes and I always follow that little step up Chris by putting me some landscape fabric uh -huh. just you know How about that? off in that you know just to cover that up a little bit uh, so that, uh, you know, we won't have a problem. And then I even add a few oh. rocks <laughs> in there. And uh, let me see, I won't make too much noise here, but uh, I put some of that in there just to hold that down and, and make sure everything is fine. You see what I'm saying? And it'll probably help with drainage as well. Oh, absolutely. It's going to help with the drainage. Right. And, and then uh, I begin to mix my soil. Ah, that looks now, good. Yes, what I did, I, 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 I purchased some already made organic uh, soil, but I did add a little uh, calcium to it. Okay. I did put some lime in this. Okay. And all I simply do is just, you know, just pour some of that in there. Let me get it started before I dump it. But I add something else to this organic. I also add a little bit of cow manure, ah. you know, and when you live near a cattle farm like I do. <laughs> it's readily available. It's readily sure. available. <laughs> so I mix that in there too. And then, of course, I'm going to finish the rest of this okay. out. Now, you don't, you don't ever, ever just fill it all the way to the top. Okay. You get it right there. And uh, like I said, I added calcium to this. I put about a cup of calcium okay. in here. That's and then, stuff. of course, I'm going to, let me get just a tad more. To get my so why are you doing that? Five mm. gallon, that's a pretty good size. Yeah, five gallon is a pretty good size because tomato plants, and, and look here, I want to talk a little bit about okay, that. Sure, sure. Uh, tomato plants, they're going to put down quite a bit long, a good long root okay. off in there. All right. Now, when you first get that, notice that these have good white uh, yes. You yes. Know, uh, yes. roots there. And another thing that I do when I, when I plant tomatoes, I do, I like to do what we call sucker them. So I cut off these little bottom mm -hmm. ones right here and let's see. And also uh, these plants here that I got, um, you can you can use them. Uh, these were over on a rack. Now normally we say don't buy those. <laughs> on the discount rack? Yes, <laughs> but I noticed that they were actually, it just where they hadn't been watered. Okay. So, you know, I save some money So you can there. save them. All right. And then, so I, I tear those little roots apart to kind of... You tease the roots yeah, a little bit. Yeah, just tease right. them a little bit. <laughs> and there we go. And we can set that off in there. Let me get that more in the middle. And then from there, you just add I more. just add more around. And, um, and let me tell you, 
you're gonna have some good tomatoes here. This this variety here is early girl. It's a oh, yeah. it's a it's real a nice variety to use. And uh yes, there you go. That's this here will do wonders. And I even get all up around there a little more. Okay. Uh, now this would apply for more than just tomatoes, uh, right? I absolutely. mean there's other vegetables you can put in there as yes. well. Yes, as a matter of fact, um you can put like one tomato plant in a bucket, uh, but you can put two pepper plants. Okay. And one you can also put maybe like uh one uh, cucumber plant, a uh, squash uh, plant, you can put one of those in there. Okay. I'm talking about in, in its own bucket. Sure. And, uh, and hey, they'll grow fine. Now, now, one of the things about growing them in the bucket also, you can start them out early. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can get, you, so you can get out there earlier. Another thing is you don't have to worry about weed control because you're uh, pretty yeah. much yeah. controlling that. That's now, right. I'm gonna tell you, if a pig weed or something comes in is, you put it in there. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't come in there naturally. <laughs> um, and another thing that, uh, you know, you can move it around uh, if yeah, you need to. Good. You know, you can Talk have a little about. flexibility okay. with okay. that. Uh, and it's just all kind of benefits to, you know, to growing in a bucket. And trust me, it does not cost you $17. Right. Which right. is always a good thing. Right. That's a good uh, thing. But, but once again, I do want to emphasize, do not use an old petroleum bucket or something like that. That, you know, if you see something like... Uh, you know, you know, lubrication fluid or something on the bucket. Don't use that. Okay. Uh, you know, but really just get your new bucket. And let's uh, talk again about the different soils you can use. Now, you, you actually put in manure. Why did you put it in manure? Well, you know, because I wanted to raise these kind of organically. Okay. Okay. And that's going to be a good source, you know, for my fertilization and, okay. and nitrogen and all that that you get with the, uh, with the manure and all of that. So uh, that's why I, I, I use that. Okay. Uh, and again, once again, you know, we do have people like to know where their food comes from, sure, how it's sure. grown. What better way than growing in a bucket? That's right. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I highly recommend uh, people who live in apartment complexes ah, that have, you know, point. just those little ledges. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is an ideal mm -hmm. way to garden. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, it, it just works perfect. Right, and I was once in an apartment, so yeah, that does work. Yes, I did yes. That as well. And cool. also, uh, I didn't bring any with me. But I would also put some mulch on top mm. of this because when you water it, that would help this stay, you know, moist and stuff uh, as well as hold that moisture in there. Because, you know, here in the Mid-South, whoo, once that, you know, <sighs> June, July heat hit. Yeah, it, it'll uh, dry know, out pretty quick. So let's talk about watering. How much would you water? Oh, uh, uh, well, basically, I would keep this, I would try to give it like maybe an, in, an inch a week. Inch a week. Is okay. what I would look at, an inch and a half. But basically, just feel... That soil, if it feels moist, you know, nice and moist, okay. you, you, you're fine. Now, we do not want to just saturate it with water sure. because then we're going to mess around and get all that old phytophthora root rot and all this stuff developed in there, and you're kind of defeating your purpose. Right, right. Uh, so, you know, you just don't want to just, just saturate it, but, you know, of course, it, with those holes in there, it shouldn't saturate, but, um, but otherwise, just keep it nice and moist about once a week, maybe twice a week. Mm -hmm. Go out there and just add a little water to it, just like you would water any other plant. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. And you made the point about moving it as well, because I had to do that when I lived in an apartment. Y yes, Make sure yes. you got enough sun. Yes, so that's the good yes. thing about putting them in, you know, containers or five-gallon buckets. E exactly. Move you it to just, follow the sun. Right. Yeah, you can move it around. And also, you can get you one of those little cages, huh. that, huh. and they, they'll work also. And that's what I would, you know, would do with this one. I won't do anything but just put that little cage in there right now, and it'll just grow right up into that little cage and, and, and you'll be fine. Okay. Um, but like I said, you know, this this is just, a, to me, it's really a neat way to even get oh, kids yeah, to go. You, you know, a lot of times we see now that kids do not know where food comes right. from or whatever, and this would just really be a nice mm -hmm. way to teach some kids how to, uh, you know, garden where food comes from and, and how they can grow it's things. Something they could do at home, I oh, agree. Oh, yes, I yes, agree. and if you're looking for a good science project, there it That's is it. right there. Right. Um, mm hmm well, good stuff, Watson. We appreciate that demo. Oh, okay. We're well, happy to bring right. it here. Now we'll yes. see how that does. Right? Oh, okay. We're going yes, to yes. test you out. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll be slicing tomatoes before, before long. We'll All right. Yeah. Thank you much. The wheel bug is a type of assassin bug, and it's kind of oh. scary because it can actually, if you handle it, it can bite you. So leave them alone. They live mostly in trees and they're pretty large. They're about an inch, inch and a half long. They're kind of a grayish, blackish color. And they're called a wheel bug because they have this big cog thing on their back. It's like a half a wheel stuck back there that looks like a cog. 
Wow. And the way that they attack their prey is they will take, they have a stout beak thing. So they stab their prey with this beak and they hold them <laughs> down with their front oh legs gosh. and then suck the juices out of the out of the prey. So uh, built in straw, huh? <laughs> pretty much. So yeah. assassin bug is kind of a fitting name. So they're often found in trees and they will eat a lot of different kinds of things, but you pretty much don't want to mess with them. Leave them where they are. Hi, Miss Rainey. We're happy to have you here with us today. I know we're going to learn a lot about herbs, but before we get started, you are the president of the Memphis Herb Society. So thank you again for coming. Thank you for inviting me. It's an mm. honor to be here. Oh, great, great. Look, first question, what is an herb? Well, an herb is a useful plant. So that really expands the definition of herb that perhaps our grandparents knew, mm. right? So you might do something that is fragrant, that might be useful as a pollinator, okay. medicinal, mm. as a food source, industrial, and right now like hemp, that's mm. a medicinal herb, mm. or hops for beer. Mm. So all those are considered herbs. How about that? Yeah. Wow. Now let's talk about some of the popular herbs that people like to grow now. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about those? Sure. I don't think people should be afraid of herbs. Ah, there you go. Okay. They really shouldn't. You try and you try again, okay. right? Right. I agree. So I agree. one of the first things is parsley. And I love parsley. I really do. But as you notice, I brought a flat leaf, Italian flat leaf, which is different from the curly. And the flat leaf is easier to grow than the curly parsley. Personally, I let mine bolt. And my seeds were originally from Italy, from a region of Venice. Mm. So it's humid there. It's hot there. And parsley does tend to bolt. It's a semi-annual. So you actually would throw seeds out every, every year. And when it bolts, I let it go to seed, and then the seeds fall wherever. Right. So I might have parsley in my walkways, in this bed or that bed, and I'm perfectly happy with that. And you're that. fine with that. Good for <laughs> perfectly you. Perfectly happy. For you. Yeah. So that would be the first one. Okay. There are very few things that really attack. Now, the one thing that loves to eat it is the swallowtail mm -hmm. caterpillar. Mm -hmm. but I'm glad for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't mind. My whole yard is f pollinator friendly because I have beehives in the back. Okay. I have three hives. So I like everything to bloom. And I'll let kale go to bloom, bok choy go to bloom. You know, everything goes wild. And then when it comes time for the tomatoes, <laughs> I'm afraid they have to go. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I do the same thing with the other herb okay. that's over here, which is dill. Yeah. Now, a lot of people like dill, mm -hmm. and it really is a wonderful herb for fish, or a vinaigrette, or any type of sauce. It doesn't do very well in the Mid-South because it's hot here, mm -hmm. and it doesn't rain enough you know, during the summer months, so it tends to bolt, but that's fine. That's okay. Right. okay. Yeah, so you put out the seed again in the fall, for a fall harvest or in the sp early spring. So when you see a pot oh. like this at the nursery, it's probably not going to do much for you in May and June. Okay. The, the season is over. But still, it's fun to grow and watch bolt. Yeah. Okay. And again, when mine bolts, the seeds go everywhere. And I, I have them growing right now, every size, small to tall, and it's growing in between the cracks of the concrete everywhere because it's acclimated to my little microclimate, gotcha. which is nice. Same thing for the parsley. So I save the parsley seed and I share it. Okay. Same with the dill. I save and I share it. Wow. So those are some fun things. Yeah. That's good stuff. Let it bolt. It let is. it go, right? It is. Let it, let it go. <laughs> All right. What else do you have for it? Yeah. The other easy thing to grow. Easy, okay. Yeah, right. easy. Well, easy. these are easy. Yeah, easy. I think right. they're easy. I think so. Are chives. Uh -huh. So these are normal chives, and they give that lovely light onion taste. Mm. Now, when we talk about diseases and things, we don't have a monoculture in our herb garden. Everything's interspersed with vegetables and other herbs. So it's not like you have one acre of parsley that you're cutting for the market. You know, right. you don't have that issue. Now, sometimes you may have uh, 
onion maggots that get in there. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe sometimes slugs for the parsley, slugs for the dill. Uh, you can go ahead and um, if it's maggots, you get rid of it. You mm -hmm. know, just take it out, replant, do something new, okay. new spot. And we have one more. Ah, ah this is the favorite. That's the favorite. Everybody, <laughs> right? That's basil, and this basil. is sweet basil. Okay. And this is new for me in my life. I didn't have that as a child in our gardens. So coming to Memphis and getting acquainted with basil was awesome. Because <laughs> everybody grows it here. Yeah, yeah. And so there are so many different kinds that are just a delight to the palate. Now, all of these things do well as companion plants. Ah, that's what I asked you about. That. Yeah, good, good. yeah. So we were working the uh, plant sale at the Memphis Botanic Garden. And so when people went out with a tomato, well, where was Grab their basil? The basil. Right. <laughs> It has to go in between because it's fragrant and it sort of captures all sorts of flying insects. And yeah. with all these t different ter type of herbs around, you're discouraging insect infestation because there are so many smells for these insects to go to. Wow. They kind of wonder, where's the tomato, right? <laughs> <laughs> and those should be, you know, tomato hornworms should be handpicked anyway. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I agree with you on that. Yeah. So another type of chive is this, and I don't only have a little tiny sample, and that's a garlic chive. Now, if you plant this, you have a good chance that it'll take over. So that means easy. I have planted those. Yes. yes? It has taken over. Do you like it? I like it. It's I fine. do too. I like especially the flowers mm -hmm. because they are so tasty mm -hmm. in a salad. Very white, delicate, lovely flowers. Same thing with the regular chive. That makes a beautiful purple flower or pink flower. Mm -hmm. And you can pick that apart to put in your salads. I mean, it's just a, a culinary delight to add such things. Okay. Which one of these would grow best in the window? Oh my, basil. Basil. Okay. Basil is very thankful, yes. Okay. It's very thankful, <laughs> I like that. So it grows well in the window. Yes. And most of these herbs prefer good soil, okay. good watering, but they do not like to stand in water. Right. So good drainage. Good drainage, yes. And the ones that do not do well with that are rosemary. Okay. It likes a rocky soil. Okay. And extra good drainage. Extra. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I put pea gravel in with my soil when I have sage or lavender. Can you tell us a little bit about your background with herbs? Well, sure. I was uh, born in Austria okay. and spent many years there as a child in a small village, a farming village. And so every householder in that village, the ladies, would have a kitchen garden that would have in it parsley, mm. dill, also uh, chives, and lovage. And they used these things to season their food because there wasn't really a lot of money for cinnamon, cloves, those, or curry was unknown. Mm. So those types of things were safe for Christmases, Easter, mm -hmm. special events. Yeah, special. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that gave me a great respect for herbs. And then I also had um, three ladies in my family, two aunts and a grandmother who had restaurants. And so they would be very aware of what was useful. Mm -hmm. If they were making spinach and they were a bit short, they would send out a helper to go cut nettles, and that was added in. And that's a very, very healthful herb to add to spinach. Or perhaps if they were making a potato salad, they would cut dandelion greens, mm. and that would be chopped very, very fine into the potato salad. So everything was useful and made life actually very interesting, wow. you know? Thank you much for sharing a little bit of your history as that. well. So <laughs> we definitely do appreciate that. So thank you yeah, again. Yeah, thank you. As you can see, this is a pretty good size ant mound. Uh, they build this mound here because this is an area that has not been disturbed. Uh, we did disturb them for about three days. And as you can see, so they have moved on to somewhere else where we don't want them. After we disturbed the ants in the other location, they moved to a new location. And guess what? They're in a spot we don't want them there either. So we're going to disturb this mound as well, and hopefully they'll move somewhere else.
As you're getting them to move, and if you're using a shovel or a rake, whatever the case may be, make sure that the ants are not running up the pole because that will hurt if they sting you. This is a good way to get those ants to move without having to use a chemical. All right, here's our Q&A segment. You jump in there with us, Ms. Rainey, all right? All right. Here's our first viewer email. What are the cultural practices to get rid of moss? And this is from one YouTube. So he wants to get rid of moss culturally. Yes. Culturally. Well, I know that. It, it, it would basically show up in very acidic soils. Okay. So one suggestion I would have to him is obviously to add lime to, to raise sure. the pH. Ah, the other practices I'm not really, you know, familiar with, but I just know that's why you have it. Okay. Oh. Let me help you out with the other ones. One, uh, if you have poorly drained soils, okay, okay compact soils, oh, yeah, acidic that. soils you already yeah. covered, and a little shade. Okay. So if you have all of those, then yeah, you're going to have the perfect ingredients for moss. And I like moss. And most people yes. like moss. There and are a lot of yes. moss lawns now. Yes. yes. In Absolutely. Japan, some beautiful gardens. In California, some beautiful gardens with moss where they work years and years mm -hmm. to establish moss. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, we definitely have those here. Uh, mm -hmm. Keep the leaves off of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay? And they will be just fine. But, of course, he wants to get rid of it culturally. Of so. so you have to improve your drainage, mm -hmm. aerate your soil, mm -hmm. get your soil tested. Yes. All right. And, and maybe limb yeah. up a couple of trees, yes. you know, to get some sunlight down. That's I the way to get rid of it culturally. It. Yes. Mm -hmm. Culturally. But again, like Ms. Randy said, it's beautiful. I think so. I've seen it. I actually have yeah. a patch of it in my own yard. Yes. yes. Looks fine to me. But I know why I have it culturally. Yes. All right. So there you have it, Juan. Thanks for your question. All right. Here's our next email. We want to aerate our yard, then put down lime and organic fertilizer. Well, these things help for weed control. We really don't want to spray anything poison to kill our weeds. So we have a lot of weeds in our yard. Or what do you think? And this is from Bethany. Well, I mean, you know, one of the keys to, you know, having a good lawn is to have a lawn that's growing very good to right. outcompete the weeds. The weeds. Right. And also, uh, you, know, mow, you know, mow your grass a little high so that um, uh, the uh, crabgrass won't germinate because crabgrass likes light to germinate. Sure. So those are some cultural practices that they can use to help with at least crabgrass and, and maybe suppress some of the weeds. But otherwise, you pretty much have to kind of go out there and hand pull them uh, if you see some weeds in different spots. I, you know, if you're trying right. not to use any kind of chemicals or whatever. Yeah, so... Ms. Bethany, here, here's the deal. The thing that she's talking about are the things you should do culturally anyway. Right. Right. So, aerating your yard, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, because you want to open the soil up. Uh, you want to get air That's down right. to the roots. You want to get water to the roots and those nutrients, okay? Putting down lime, of course, helps mm -hmm. according to your soil test, right? And she said organic fertilizers. All of mm -hmm. those are good cultural practices. Right? Yes. Because at the end of the day, if you want the grass to outcompete yes. the weeds, you need a good dense stand right. of grass. grass. So, so these are your methods mm -hmm. right. to do that. Yes. Right? But we did find out earlier, you can just eat some of those weeds, can't you? You can. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You yes. can. No, right. yes. But yeah, and they don't want to spray anything, you know, which is fine. Yes. You know, that, that's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to use any chemicals, I mean, right. that's fine. You know, because we talked about that earlier as well. But there you have it, Miss Bethany. Yeah, what, what, what you're asking is your answer. Okay, mm -hmm. so just do those things culturally and you should be fine. All right, here's our next for your email. Can I recycle expired milk or juice into my garden? And this is from High Kick uh, YouTube. Interesting question. Recycle expired milk or juice mm -hmm. in the garden, Walt. What do you think? Well, uh, I know the, the milk will be fine. Milk is fine. Uh, calcium. Well, calcium. Yes, calcium. Mm -hmm. But the juice. Uh, no, no. I, I wouldn't go, the, again, going back to the milk, it's, mm -hmm. it's calcium. It, you know, you just cut it a little bit with water. Yeah. If it's acidic, maybe mm -hmm. not. But if it's sugary, because we do put That's molasses. That's what the juice, right? We, we do, do put, put molasses, molasses right. on right. as a fertilizer and to increase the microbes in right. the soil. Sure so that might work. Should do. Most of your juices, especially your citric 
juices yeah. are very acidic though. So that yes. would be a very no. acidic. So I wouldn't want to use those maybe juices. apple maybe. or something like that. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I'll, like I said, so I'll maybe. be a little skeptical. With yeah. That. Expired milk. Yes. Yeah. Some of your juices. Mm. I don't know. The acidity would, would concern me. Yes. Uh, a lot of sugar. They're very sweet. Of course, it will attract insect pests or insects. Wasp. Yes. You know, anything that likes, you know, these pests that like the little sugar. Can and you may also some attract some rodents too. It may attract with some these rodents. food type ingredients. Right. Because mm -hmm. we actually tell that. folks not to put a lot of your juices in compost piles for that reason. Right. Ants. Right. Rodents. Mm -hmm. So I, I be a little careful, you know, with the juice. Molasses. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That's a good point that you brought yeah. up for the microbes. So there you have it. High kick. All right. Hope that answers your question. So, uh, Ms. Randy, it's been fun. Thank, Thank you. Thank y'all for being here. Thank, Thank you for letting Thank me Thank you. All right. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org, and the mailing address is familyplot 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. To get more information on things we talked about on today's show, go to familyplotgarden.com. There we have links to extension publications with every video. You can also check out the full garden calendar. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plots, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe.